Hang out. All right, we are live. Uh, yeah. All right. So join up, guys. We are live on the on the computer this time because on the on the um, mobile phone it didn't work. Well, you know. After. All right. Yeah. yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Okay. All right. So, um, wait. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's working. So, yeah, you can go on our channel now. All right. All right. All right. Well, the same the link. Give me a second, guys. So, uh, yeah. We should be live right now. Yeah, we are. Okay, I'm just gonna contact Nona. All right, good. All right, guys. So, yeah, what do you guys want us to do? <laughs> uh, it's really up to you guys what we do. Just going to yeah, type in the chat, everyone. Okay, so I'm just going to grab out the, should I grab, give me the cartons. Uh, okay. Which deck should I use? Alright. Alright, so it should be working now. So, um, if you have seen my past tutorials, uh, you've said I've actually have done a video on this color change that I don't know why it's not working, but yeah, like that. I haven't done that in a while. You can also do that. I'll be teaching you guys that real quick. So basically, you take a card out of the pack, for instance, this one. And you, while the spectators looking at that card, you take a pinky break, place that on top, and it'll be a double. So then what you do is you grab the card like this. Remember, it's double. And then you just bring it on the deck. So you apply pressure with the index finger, and your thumb will do that, and it should flip if you do it right. Uh, like that, yeah. So, yeah. Another thing is the home and pass. I don't think we've done a tutorial on that, have we? Oh, no, not yet. So, yeah, I reckon you should take them in the home and pass should uh, look something like that. And it's on top, yeah. Uh, my brother could show you the trick now. Oh, not yet. I'm just going to send a link to someone real quick while I wait for people to join. Um, should we go through the... Uh, go through the one? Uh, maybe... Uh, actually, I reckon we should go through the design of the Virtuoso, like the... Uh, um, give me a second. Oh, well. Um, one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, right here, let me do something real quick. I'm just going to move the laptop down so I can see what's happening here. Should be able to move it. Yeah, here we go, here's some space. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be showing you guys some tricks from the book. Yeah, uh, I was gonna do a video series on it, but we haven't uploaded in a while. So, yeah, this basically just explains a lot of tricks, uh, like the cross cut force, for instance. So, what that is is when the spectator chooses a card. 
and uh, there it is there. So then you cut the pack like this and place it on top and then then you cut cut it the other way like that. I actually haven't done that anymore. Let's just read through this. So um the card is to be forced the card to be forced is uh on the bottom of the deck of the deck to respect that let him cut cut the cards on the table and then pass the cards to the magician. And then you form a cross like this as shown on the picture. And talk about the trick you're going to perform. Yeah, and it'll take so what I said, so what we do is we take pick a card, this card for example, and uh we put it on top. We get the spectator to cut the card and place it like that. Now distract the spectators say that uh explain the trick you're going to do and then then you can say so that card's going to be lost and it'll be on the top. Like that. So it's just misdirection. Alright guys, so go check us out. Oh shit, my thing froze. <laughs> Alright, now continue. My thing froze, I'll leave. Yeah, okay. does not tolerate that stuff. Oh. So, I'm going to pitch you a really easy false cut now. No, no one has joined yet, but um, uh, maybe. I, I think they're in other countries, so they'll probably be a spec because we're in Australia. Okay. Uh, so, let's go check us out on Magic Gaming Tutorials. We are live streaming currently. Um, yeah, so it. It's magic gimmick tutorials, so I don't know if you can see there, but yeah, magic gimmick tutorials. Yeah, we are live, so. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to be teaching you a false card, and yeah, that's very nice how you knock the door out. Yeah, so spectator's going to choose a card, you put it on top, and then say you're going to cut the cards. And what you're going to need to do is hold the deck something like this. And uh, you should be able to use your two fingers to spread the cards like that. And goes put that pack into your hand so it'll be like this. So it's two fingers. Uh, put it into this hand, then split them again. And then use your third finger like this, the thumb there, to put it in. And grab the middle pack. Uh, turn your hand like this. The index finger is going to go like that. And put that on top and it's false so basically it doesn't do anything um so yeah next trick uh is i've done i've done a video on this before for a little bit i'm gonna film something okay i've done a video on this before so uh be sure to check it out actually have i done a video i don't know i'll have a look so this trick is basically when a spectator chooses a card, for instance, the four of spades, put it on top and then you shuffle it all the way to the bottom like this. And you do that by stripping off the top card here. So that's the spectator's card you put on top and then you say you're going to shuffle the pack. And basically what you do is you strip that card off and then drop all the others like you normally shuffle. And then you shuffle again, but as you hold it like this you slide the card down and drop the rest on top like you would do a normal shuffle then you're going to need to do is what you're going to need to do is what's called the sloppy shuffle uh is take some cards like this then flip them go again flip them go again and then flip them and keep doing that until you get the last card which is this spectator's card and you put it on top so basically what you've done, it looks like you've shuffled the cards, but really they're just like this. So what you do is you uh, you take off a bunch of the cards that are at the top here. So just a little bit, like for instance, like this much. And then my brother's just doing a short. So then you say some cards are back to face, some cards are face to back and some cards are back to back and to find the back to back cards is you want to uh loosen your grip on the deck that's wasn't supposed to happen but normally if you were to do that 
uh, there will be a break between like this. So you loosen your grip on the deck and uh, you should see a little break there. And it's kind of hard to do, but there we go. And then what we do is we flip it over with these cards. This isn't, and then you put it on top. And then the spectators card will be the first card there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not in a comfortable position right now. I've got to sit down. Okay. So, I don't know why the camera is reversed. It's like I'm doing it left-handed, but I'm not. So, I'll do a different trick. Spectator's going to choose a card. Type something in the chat, guys. Chat's, uh, only one guy's typed something in the chat. Make sure to type something in the chat right now. Yeah, come say hi, guys. What? I did a short. For a bit. All right, so I'm going to shuffle the cards. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you a really easy card control right now, so let's get started. Get a spectator, choose a card. Six of hearts. Uh, you're going to riffle through the deck and then place it in. This is a bad angle to teach. And then you, when you push it in, you want to side jog it like this, like where your pinky is. So after you do that, get a take your pinky and push it down and get a pinky break like push that. Push it down and get a pinky break. Put that on. And after you do that, then you transfer it into a thumb break. So your thumbs breaking up the cards and then say you're going to cut the cards and what you're going to do is take a uh, bit by bit of the bottom pack and put it on top until you get to the last one and that controls the card to the top well not to the top sorry to the bottom Matthew, you want to down, I have all right so yeah type something in the chat guys um i'm also going to be teaching the waterfall card control uh just really quickly so basically you do that same side jog thing where you put the card in and you side jog and you get a pinky break just get a pinky break on the card and uh what you do is instead of so it's a version of that pinky break so instead what we do is we side jog it like this <laughs> finding it quite interesting uh what we do is we side jogger like this the card and then we move the whole card like this so basically we want to get the card like this okay <laughs> i feel like how you doing <laughs> so then what we do after we have the card uh like this and just remember we want to cover it from the spectator so we could do that by using our hand like this so the spectator doesn't see that card here then what we want to do is we want to uh, take a few cards here and I can't really find a good angle and put it like that and then you want to flex the cards like this. It's a bit hard to do on camera because it says that it's reversed. So again, so, side job the card like that. So there's a card side jog, and remember, then when we are about to do the waterfall, make sure the spectator uh, sees this part of the deck, so uh, they don't see this card, just so that you're going to do the waterfall, while well, you don't have to say that. When you flex the cards, and then when, when I'm coming up to do the waterfall, I strip that card out, and it's a bit hard to do, but I strip that card out, and let the other cards fall, and then it should be on top. It's a little hard to do on camera, but yeah. My brother wants to show you something now. Alright, so we haven't been do we haven't done a lot of color change tutorials on our channel, so I'm just gonna do one on stream real quick. Um just trying to find a good angle for the camera here. Uh, if you're wondering, this is uh the uh artifice deck. Yeah, I like the design, it looks pretty cool. Um yeah. Uh, made by the illusionists plan car company uh yeah this comes with a double back as well just saying 
All right, so we're going to put that to the side. So this color change is called the snappy color change. Uh, I think I think we've done a tutorial on it. But um, anyways, so I'm just going to show you guys the design of the cards because, I mean, they, they, they look really cool. Um, so, for instance, to start off this, you could either do, like, yeah, you could probably take off the top card or get them to select one. Um, for instance, the Jack of Spades. Well, actually, no, you perform the double lift first. So, for instance, the three of diamonds. Um, you just place it flat here. Uh, actually, I shouldn't have used this deck because um, it is borderless, so you can't think you can see if a card's face up or not. So that isn't very good, but I'll just still use it for the demo. Um, so we got the three diamonds here. And what you're trying to do is you're going to hold in a mechanics group just like this. And you're going to use these three fingers, these three fingers to pull this card like to the side and then to make it go at the bottom of the deck. But you're going to cover it with your right or left hand. Depends on if you're right or left hand, it depends. So you just want to slightly um, drag it to the side of the deck and place on the bottom. So I hope that was a good, well, good demo. So just once you do it quickly, it looks something like this, like that. Um, yeah, just saying if you're doing this card control, I mean, card color change, you just want to make sure you're using a deck that is not borderless like this, like this one here. Um, anyways, yeah, so now I'll pass it over to my brother. So I'm going to be doing a deck review for you guys, so let's just get started on this real quick. What should I do? Let's do this deck. I've uh, used this deck in uh, some recent videos. But uh, yeah, definitely check the uh, shapeshifter color change out. So with this deck, it has a different sort of stock here. So to say, there's just uh, some add cards. Let the other one go. Oh, it's up here too. Double back as well. So, first thing is, is that, I don't know if you could see, but if I like sort of tilt the card, you should be able to see like this weird like patterns. There we go. You can see those weird patterns there. Um, and I would say, it is, it, these cards are easy to like flex, so it's easy to do springs when you break them in. Uh, let's see if I can try a Pharaoh Shuffle. I'm not very good at these, but yeah, no, it's not that good to do with the Pharaoh Shuffle because, as you can see, uh, the cards do not. Uh, it's sort of they don't. If I were to intersect them like this, they get stuck because of the type of stock that they have here. Uh, that's that sucks really because these cards are actually pretty good. That's the only downfall about them. Uh, as you can see, the design of them looks really cool with the two, uh, two swords, and uh, the pips also look good as well. So, see if I could do this. Uh, there we go. I'm still a little rusty. I haven't done magic in a while. So, let's see, the king, oh, that didn't work out, the king, here we go, can't really see, I'm looking at the three, there we go, boom, king, so, yeah, that is that, uh, let's have a look at, there we go. I'm going to be trying to do a few shuffles with this just to break them in. could say that but it's a dynamo shuffle yeah. all right now i'm going to invite my brother to the setup 
so he can do some tricks for you guys as well. This will probably get more views uh, after we finish live streaming yeah. when it saves. Alright, so I'm not really going to do a uh, magic trick tutorial. Um, no, this isn't really a deck review. It's kind of, you know how you've got two main finishes for playing cards. You've got the Linoid finish and the Air Cushion finish. I'm going to just um, be discussing like which one is better for magic. So um, this is Air Cushion finish and this is Linoid finish. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm saying it properly, but, you know, um, I think I'm saying it properly. Anyways. Uh, do I have a double backer in this? No, I don't think so. So this is air cushion, air cushion finish. Um, the cards are a little softer, you know, in the hands. Uh, it's less crispy, you know. It has a less crispy feeling than um the Tally Ho deck. Um, yeah, this is yellow. Uh, yeah, I don't really know why I got that, but um, let's try some springs, you know, some dribbles. Oh crap! I haven't done magic in a while, but. Anyways, uh, just I can already tell by dribbling it in the hands, the cards are a bit more flexible. Um, yeah, but this is borderless. I actually don't mind this design. So I'll just leave that there. I'll move on to the Talio because I don't really want to bore you guys that much. So this double backer, yes, yeah, double backer. Um, so as I'm dribbling, uh, you can technically hear it by the sound. The more crispier than the la than the deck that I showed you before. Um, yeah, it has a very crispy feel to it. Um, anyways, I'll go back and go back to the question that um, I wanted to answer: which one is better for Magic? It's really just your opinion. So I suppose just get two decks: one with the Lenoid finish and one with the Air Cushion, and just test them out. Um, yeah, for magic, just see how they are. If you're into card street, test them out. For that, um, yeah, later in the stream, I'll show you the Virtuoso deck, which is made for, well, designed for card uh, It looks pretty sick. I'll just, I'll show you that after I bring my brother to the setup. So, yeah, um, overall, my opinion for which one's better for magic is the air cushion finish, just because it's more, well, I don't, the texture is just a bit more, you know, fluffier, lighter. It has a lighter kind of feel. Um, whether this one is a bit, which is a lot crispier, you know. Um, anyways, just, I'd say pick up two decks with uh, these two finishes and just test them, test them out um, to your preference and see which one is better in the hands for you. All right, so now I'm going to pass over to my brother. Um, I don't... I've got a question from Philo. Hi, right, can I ask why you why do you need different cards? Okay, so I can explain that question. So excuse me. All right, yeah. Uh, can I borrow the border list cards for a second? Oh, from these. Yeah. Okay, so the reason why we use uh two different cards is uh, two different types of cards or well, a lot of different types of cards is uh as the cards uh wear out uh they do get uh they get this weird color on as you can see so they're quite old and they get rips and tears and bends in them which isn't that good but the two types of the main two types of cards are borderless and bordered cards so if i just show you here now the reason why i prefer the these the ordered cards are best is because if a card was face up in the deck for a trick for instance and I tilt the cards here for like a little bit like that you could see the outline there if I put it next to the camera should be able to see the outline there we go uh, and it's it gives away the trick so and with the ordered cards uh, if a card was face up, you could not tell, as you can see. If I tilt the cards, you can't tell. You'd have to actually go through and look. That's that's the main reason. So, yeah. Uh, any any other questions you want to ask? Uh, uh, if not, then I'll go through the Fetuoso deck. 
Uh, any other questions you want to ask? So I'll teach you this color change real quick. Uh, we have the 10, we do want the cards to be face, uh, face up with the pips facing up. What we do is we use our hand to cover it here and we move this card up a little bit and we use our sort of the bottom of the hand to strip the card out like this. So like that. And then we push this card down with our index, come over and place it there. So it's a little hard to do, but you could get used to it. Like that. Uh, my brother's going to be going over just a the virtuoso. cardistry deck or the virtuoso deck that's meant for cardistry. I think after this, we might have to wrap up. We'll see how things will go. After this, I think we might, I don't know, uh, skim through some of the magic books that we got, and then that might we might wrap it up after that. So this is the virtuoso deck. I think this is the 20, 2016 design, I think. Uh, I think they've got an updated design of these cards, which are different colors. Um, so yeah, the Virtuoso. So, oh, this spring, spring, summer, twenty sixteen. Yeah. All right. So um, they've got these uh, cards that tell you information about the deck and you know design for cards and stuff. So they've got these cards where you have to match like these uh, puzzle match things. Uh, Got one here. I, sh I actually don't know why I didn't set these up properly for some reason. Um, so let me see if I can match them. Do I, I don't know if I've got another card or not. Actually, this might be. Yeah, there we go. So that's what. Well, this is a four cards combined together to make the design. I, I'd say it looks pretty cool. I mean, just take a look at that. The yellow and the white and gray. I must say, this is a very interesting design. So. Uh, yeah, that's just what the cards look like yeah together so these are just like kind of add cards and say anyways uh for this design yeah it looks pretty cool as you can see with the little line the black line in the center and the yellow um yeah the design it's got yeah the classic yellow yellow and black i'd say yeah that's the main colors on the hips and you know so that's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to just do a quick example of a color change. I'm not very good at this, but I'm just going to explain it. So you perform a double lift and uh, flip it over. So for instance, double lift. And this is called the, I think it's called the paintbrush color change or something like that, where you, you kind of strike the card against the top of the deck like that. And then as you're doing that, you let go of that card just like that and then bring up the bottom card from the double lift so i'm not very good at this but I'll, I'll, you know do a solid attempt something like that i don't know how that was because i wasn't looking at the at the stream but anyways uh guys just type in chat if you want don't be shy any questions uh welcome so anyways um yeah I'll do a quick dribble with these cards yeah they look pretty cool um i'm gonna pass over to my brother i think we're gonna go through uh oh, maybe uh now you see me kit um and maybe a few other few other magic books that we have so yeah i'll invite him to the setup yeah matthew come on uh, we'll go through one book each, I'd say. We've got three to cover. To go over, aren't we? All right, come on. I'll just pick this. All right. So what would you like me to cover? Uh, just choose one of the books over here. Okay, so I'm going to be doing, for instance, I'll do this one for you guys to watch. Okay, so... What we are going to do with this book, I'm just going to be explaining what we've done so far. So, the cross cut force. So, uh, basically, this is one of the most easiest uh, cut. This is basically, the most easiest 
of all uh, to force a card on someone. So I'm going to grab a deck of cards and I'll be yeah, just use, to do it. use the party cup. Okay. Take this out. Okay. So basically, we are going to be forcing the spectator. Oh, we have a question. Do we? Oh, we explained that why we use each deck is tricks. Okay, so we answered that. What we? I'll answer it again. The reason is is that uh, because the for instance these are borderless cards. Okay, it's borderless, and if a card is face up in the deck for a trick. And I push them across. You can see the white line because the card is face up. Right there. You could see that there. Okay. So you could kind of, if the cards were here, you could see that line right there. If I focus the camera a little bit, you could see the white line, which is not good. Uh, with Whether with uh, the cards that are, that have borders, you can't see it because the white borders here. If it's face up, I tilt the deck a little bit. You cannot see it, which is uh, which is why I like these cards better. And the reason why uh, we have so many decks is because if uh, one of these uh, decks get ruined or worn out, we have another one to go to, which is pretty simple to to go ahead and do. Um, so yeah, continue on the fifty amazing card tricks. Oh yes, yeah, so the card card force. I'll just show you. you can show some examples. Show like two or three. So I'm going to be showing you the cross card force, which is when uh, the spectator you're going to be forcing the five of diamonds and you're going to ask the spectator to cut the deck like this and to put this other half, and then you're going to put this other half here, but you're going to cross it like that to make a cross to make a visual for the spe. For the spectator to know that the, uh, the deck has been cut then what you do is you grab this this part of the deck and you flip it around and uh you say this is your card don't show me and you'll know what it is so that's basically the basic uh card force a anyway i want to say uh give i want to give a shout out to philo go subscribe uh to philo uh basically all the questions have been coming from uh, that user right there. You want to do? Yeah, I'll do the. Uh, right, my brother's going to do uh, something. After this, we're going to wrap up. Oh uh, no, but we got another book and the case. Okay. Uh, we can do that uh, tomorrow. I think tomorrow. Yeah, on tomorrow right. stream. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. Um, we might do a stream tomorrow. We might not. We'll see how things go. Anyways, we've got the hundred and one. Cool magic tricks with Glad Single Deck. We did a series on that actually. If you haven't looked at it, go check it out. Um, yeah, so we did a whole series on that, counting a book review. We also did a book review on that. Uh, yeah, I'll just skim through the book. I, I, I don't think I'll do a demonstration because we've already been streaming for more than half an hour now. So I'll just go through it. Uh, so I'll go through the to get with. I'll go through the contents. So we got the, it's got the yeah, introduction, you're getting started, putting on a magic show, and then it's got like the actual tricks that you could actually do. So it's got quick tricks and simple illusions, diabolically clever card tricks. So it's technically, it's got coin tricks, um, mental magic, ring and rope tricks. And yeah, it's got a lot in there. Um, I reckon you should go pick up this book. Uh, we left uh yeah just check out our book review i'd say that um the book review we go a little bit more in depth on all the tricks we just skim through it and yeah in the series we teach you where well, we demonstrate do demos on how to do these tricks um so i'll just skim through it no slide it's got sleight of hand coin tricks I'm not sure. Holy napkin. Uh, I think I don't think I've done that before. Anyways, we got the coin tails. Yeah, we got so we got a range of tricks here. So yeah, I'll say one more time. Go if you haven't seen our 
one to one cool magic tricks with Glenn Singleton series. I suppose you go check that out. Um, so you can go to playlists or you can scroll down from our videos and you can see this. All right, so um, yeah, that's let's wrap up the stream. Um, I think we'll be streaming tomorrow, we don't know yet. Uh, we're gonna cover some more cool magic stuff that we have. So, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Um, Philo, thanks, guys. Really enjoyed the live stream. Uh, thank you, Philo, for your comment. Um, yeah, just stay tuned. And, yeah, see you guys.